Thank you, each and every person who's here. If you're here as our guest, we're so grateful for you being Praise here. God. Amen. And we God. want you to become more than just a guest. We want you to become a part of this family. Amen. And everyone say Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Everybody say Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say Praise the Lord. Everybody say, I, I'm missing, I miss uh, one person there. Everybody say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. All right, hallelujah. 
Praise God. Amen. What an honor to stand before you today and preach the word of the Lord. Amen. I do not take it lightly, even though this is home and I'm the pastor here. I realize that this is a very, very serious place that I stand because I realize that every word that I give, amen, I will have to give it an account for it. Amen. I want to make mention after the service, I want to take a picture with all of our young men, all of our men, uh, men all men, uh, uh, from the youngest uh, uh, to the oldest, uh, uh, right up here up front, immediately following our altar call. Uh, amen. And so uh, please uh, uh, be here. Uh, don't rush off after service. But we are celebrating the uncommon man today. We're celebrating the uncommon man. God bless you and you may be seated. Everyone say, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Everyone say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you love Him, say, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to get you all with me one way or another. Amen. On any given Sunday, there are 13 million more adult women than men in America's churches. This Sunday, almost 25% of married, church-going women will worship without their husband. Midweek activities often draw 70 to 80% female participants. More than 90% of American men believe in God, and 5 out of 6 call themselves Christians. But only one out of six attend church on any given Sunday. Fewer than 10% of churches are able to establish or maintain a vibrant men's ministry. Fewer than 1% of church-going men participate in any sort of ongoing men's ministry program. If a child comes to Christ 12% of the time, the whole family will follow. If the mom comes, there's a 15% chance the family will follow. But if the man comes to church, 90% of the time, the family will come along That's behind. That's right. Everybody say, whoa. Whoa. Everybody say what? <laughs> Church is good for men. Amen. And men are good for the church. Amen. I'm thankful for the men who are a part of this church. Amen. Even though it may be uncommon to be a true man of God. I want you to understand something today. Just because you say you believe in God and just because you say you're a Christian, there are some things that come along with that that identify you as a Christian. If you are truly a Christian, you don't have a problem coming to the house of God every time the doors are open. Right? Hallelujah. Yes. And if you don't agree with me, I'm sorry. I'm preaching the Word of God. I don't take offense at you not agreeing, but I do know one who will take offense at it. I thank God for godly men. I thank God that I am a part of a church where there are godly men. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Involved men will help a church grow. They will help it be healthy. And they will help have harmony in the church. I want the men of this church to get on fire for God. I want them to love Jesus, not just on Sunday. I want them to do it every day of the week. I want you to be Holy Ghost filled from the top of your hands, heads to the soles of your feet. I wish that the men of this church would obey the scripture and lift up holy hands yes. everywhere they go. Hallelujah. And you'll have to forgive me. I've been in camp meeting all week, and I understand that you haven't. But I want the spirit that I have to get a hold of you. I want this church to be camp meeting every Sunday morning when we gather here. And I don't care what your background is, you know what camp meeting is like. Uh -huh. Even quiet people know how to get with it when they go to camp meeting. Right. Amen. So this place needs to be camp meeting men every time we come here. If we want this church to be on fire, we need the men to lead the fire in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to, 
if you want your children to grow up right, I know it's noble to teach them how to bounce a ball, and it's even noble to teach them how to cast a line, but you're better off teaching them how to pray, teaching them how to live faithful, teaching them how to praise and worship God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We go to Mark chapter 1, verse 19 uh, and verse 20, and we find uh, two uh, young men, uh, and these are uncommon men, uh, but we're going to celebrate the uncommon man today. Uh, amen. Verse 19 in Mark chapter 1 says, And when he had gone a little further thence, uh, he saw James, uh, the son of Zebedee, uh, and John, his brother. Who was the daddy? Zebedee, oh yeah, oh, you got it. Amen. So Zebedee is the father in this picture. Uh, amen. Uh, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Uh, so we got Zebedee, who's the father. We got James and John, who are the sons. Uh, and they're working alongside of their dad. And verse 20 says, and straightway he called them. Jesus called them. Uh, let me paint a picture here for you. If you're not certain of where this scripture is at. Jesus is out walking down the road handpicking his disciples. Uh, he's looking for some uncommon men. Uh, and where does he go to find them? He doesn't go to the bar to find them. He doesn't go down to the lounge uh, to find them. He doesn't go out to the golf course to find them. Uh, he goes to their place of work uh, to find them. Uh -huh. He looks for some work men and they're working amen and so Jesus calls them verse 20 says and straightway he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him Jesus called them amen and they got up amen and they followed Jesus to where he, where, where he was going he said hey I want you to go with me and we know what Jesus was going to do with them. We know that Jesus was calling them into the ministry. Amen. I thank God for a man named Zebedee. Yes. I thank God for a man named Zebedee. A father who was raising his sons the way that they should be raised. Amen. He had trained these children to be good, hard workers. He had trained these children to follow the voice of God. Uh -huh. He had trained these children to be willing to lay down everything that they had to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. We have a job as fathers. And men, you are here today. and You may not have young children in this church, but you are still a godly man. And it is your responsibility to set an example for the children yes. of this church. Yes. And everybody say amen. amen. We're celebrating the uncommon man. Thank God for godly men. Maybe you were a filthy, rotten sinner younger years of your life, but you're not anymore. Amen. God washed you with the blood of Jesus and now you're saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. And somebody shout hallelujah. You may have not have been an example back then, but thank God you're an example now that young men and boys in this church can grow up and look to and follow. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We have a responsibility to bring up, to raise our children, amen, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh-huh. Oh man, I got to teach him to do this. I got to teach him to do that. There are a lot of things that we, but I want you to understand today if we'll take care of the spiritual things, everything else will fall into place. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. It's your responsibility as a man or a young man to make sure that you are leading others in the nurture. Everybody say nurture. Amen. And the admonition of the Lord. There's something about the nurture of the of the Holy Ghost that will touch and strengthen and heal. I want you to understand when you walk in this place, there is a protection. There is a healing. There is something that will help you when you come into the presence and the power of the Lord. Amen. Why do we make a big deal about coming to church every time the doors are open? Because godly men walk into the house of God every time the doors are open. 
because there is a nurture in, in, in the word of God. The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. They didn't say, oh, only on Sundays. I was glad when they said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Amen. Thursday, Friday, Hallelujah. Saturday, and thank God for the bonus of yeah. Sunday. There's a nurture that comes along with living for the Lord. There's a strength, amen, that comes from living with the living for the Lord. Amen. So we are, we have to raise our children, bring them up in the nurture and the admonition. Everybody say the admonition. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Of the Lord. Oh, praise God. Raising up our children. Amen. Every man under the sound of my voice, every young man under the sound of my voice, it's our responsibility to bring up because it doesn't happen naturally. It doesn't happen naturally. Amen. We've got to teach them. Can you say amen? We've got to do everything that it takes. Amen. And as we look at these two boys, James and John, amen, they were brought up, amen, in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Uh, if you look at Mark chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he is surnamed, amen, uh, but. Boan Erges, which is the sons of thunder. Mark 3 and 17 is identifying what kind of men James and John were. They were raised, they identified their father in this scripture because they wanted uh, these two boys to be identified. They were the sons, if I say the sons. The sons of thunder. Amen. That, that tells us what kind of dad they had. Thunder. Anybody know what thunder is? Yes. I mean, thunder will scare you. Yes. Thunder makes some noise. Thunder will get your attention. Amen. They were the sons of yes. thunder. A lot of times people identify them as being the thunder. Well, perhaps they were, but they were the th sons of thunder. Here's a daddy who had raised his boys, and he had such an effect on them that others called him thunder. Wow. Woo. And I want to be identified. Woo. Hallelujah. I don't, uh, uh, oh, who's that guy? Right? That, that fat guy, that's their dad. <laughs> Oh, oh, that short guy, uh, he's their dad. No, uh, uh, thunder, that's uh, their dad. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to be identified as an apostolic, holy man of yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. I want to be identified as fire. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. So here, uh, Zebedee is identified. Amen. They were the sons of thunder. Amen. And, and when thunder moves and thunder rolls, it has an effect on everything around it and everything that hears it. There is zeal and energy wrapped up in thunder. I think this church needs to be full of some Holy Ghost men who are thunder and lightning in Rayford, North Carolina. energy causes things to move, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, I don't know, I can't remember all of it right now because it's tucked away back in my brain. You know what they teach in science class about yes. momentum yes. and energy and yes. all that stuff and how to... I wonder if we have enough praise and worship uh, and energy in the men of this church to move this church anywhere. We're not supposed to be getting quiet at this moment. I mean, right, right there shows us. I mean, I want us to understand. 
There's something that happens. We get moved into a net, another level with God when we yeah. begin to praise and worship. A lot of yeah. people think, oh, well, that's just a bunch of noise and that's a bunch of this and a bunch of that. Uh, yes, it is to the human eye, but to the spiritual eye, it is attractive to God. Yeah. I'm not yes. making noise for you. I'm making noise for God. Uh, Amen. Yeah. Just uh, uh, Psalms 100 said, we read it today, yeah. make a joyful noise. I didn't look at what time it was when I got up here. Uh, hallelujah. So please uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, Luke chapter 9 verses 51 through 56. It says, And it came to pass, uh, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face uh, to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. Uh, and they went and entered into the village of the Samaritans uh, to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, James and John, uh -huh. the sons of Zebedee, and then the sons of thunder, yes. hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. when they saw this, they spoke up, uh -huh. even when they weren't supposed to speak up, they spoke up, you know sometimes, uh, you know, we're fired up, yeah. I would much rather have somebody that's fired up, and yeah. doesn't always uh, fire when they're supposed to, but at least they're fired. <laughs> I'll just be honest. I know we are supposed to do everything in line and decent and in order, but I would, I would, I, I would much rather have somebody that's going to fire off than somebody that's going to be a dud and never shoot. Right? Amen. Praise God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so James and John, and when they saw this, they said, "Lord." Will thou command? Will thou? Will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? These men had so much faith in God that they believe, even though they were a little out of line here, I want you to understand this. They still had been raised by a son of thunder. Or they had been raised by thunder. So they were sons of thunder. Amen. And so even though they were firing off when they wasn't supposed to, they still had enough faith to believe if God told them to do something, it was going to happen. Amen. God, if you tell us to, to call down fire from heaven, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah. You want us to do that? Uh -huh. Hey, at least they were asking God, is there something that we can do? I would much rather have somebody that wants to do something, even if it's not the right thing at the right time, at least they're willing to put their faith and their trust in God. Sons of thunder, amen. Hey, they had enough faith in God. Hey, if God tells us to do it, it's going to happen. Amen. And you want to know what? Sometimes God will take us and shake us and tell us to do something, and we start questioning God. Are you sure about that, God? That's we need to start stepping out in faith. We don't have to wait for God to tell us to do something. We just look at it and ask, God, you want me to go pray for that sick person? Amen. Yes, we should. God, do you want me to go invite that person to church? Yes, we Amen. should. Come on. Yes. Amen. That's right. You're right. Amen. Come on. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They had enough, but, but somebody put this in them. Amen. Somebody put this zeal and this fire in them. Amen. James and John, amen, made up two thirds of Jesus' inner circle. The men of the same father. Does anybody know who the, the inner circle was? It was Peter. It was Peter. James and John. 
So the sons of thunder made up two-thirds of the inner circle of Jesus. Uh -huh. we, we get aggravated. Oh, James and John, sons of thunder. Oh, they're always uh, shooting off when they shouldn't have. Uh, oh, Peter, he was hot-headed, cutting, uh, cutting off ears and, and saying all kinds of things that he shouldn't have been doing. But you want to know why? They were the inner circle uh, of Jesus. And they were his, his inner circle. Why in the world do we talk about them and give them a hard time? You want to know why? Because we're not on the inner circle. Mm. 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 Preach it. Come on. Oh, come on now. Good preaching. Hallelujah. Truth. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zeal and fire. Man, I, mean, I can't sit still. I, I, I want to have some energy inside of me. Right. Hallelujah. Why? Why? Because I'm uncommon. Made up two-thirds of Jesus' inner circle. Where were they at? They were with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. That's where they were. The sons of thunder. Amen. Yeah. They weren't sleeping. No. They weren't dozing off. They were on fire. Amen. Guess what? They had something inside of them and it wasn't a five-hour energy uh, capsule. Can you say amen? amen? I saw something somebody posted uh, last night. Uh, the, 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 this, uh, it was a joke. Uh, amen. The pastor started, they started taking communion before service uh, and he changed the communion wine with five-hour energy stuff uh, so that everybody would stay awake uh, during the service. Uh, hallelujah. I'm glad I don't need five-hour energy. I've got the Holy Ghost uh, inside of me. And it doesn't matter what you're preaching. If you're preaching the Word of God, I'm going to get up and get with it. Yes! Yeah. Hallelujah! And for those of you who need a Red Bull or a Monster Energy drink, maybe we ought to start selling them too back there with the soda pops. And everybody shout hallelujah. But James and John uh, were with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. They were with Jesus uh, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, amen. Zebedee raised remarkable sons. Uh, everybody say remarkable. Remarkable. Amen. And his sons were called by Jesus. Uh, amen. They were called by Jesus. Jesus knew what kind of men that, he, that were needed to spread the gospel. Praise God. They were called into service. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 21 says, and, and going on from thence, he saw, the other, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. They were called into service. These men knew how to work, not only in the physical, but also in the spiritual. How was the world turned upside with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because he picked working men. Uh-oh. He picked people who knew how to work. They weren't promised a paycheck. Well, if I know how much pay I'm getting, I'm going, I, I, that's how much work I'm going to give. No. Jesus called and they went. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise amen. The Lord. God is so good to us. They were called. Amen. Uh, they were called into service. And when they were called, they didn't hesitate. You read this scripture right here. Zebedee was not a poor fisherman. Read verse, and straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants. So Zebedee wasn't just some uh, poor fisherman out here uh, with him and, him and just his fa little family trying to get by. He was wealthy enough to hire, to have people that worked for him. And they were called, Ooh, wait a minute. Uh -huh. Jesus, who am I? I'm following this guy who uh, all we know he's a teacher and he's a preacher. That's really about all we know. Some people say he may be the Messiah, but yet they knew the voice of God. And Zebedee, their father, was right there with them, and he wasn't holding on to him and saying, "Oh, James and John, don't go, don't go. You've got the family business to take care of." No, they left. That's, that's they right. followed. They listened to the voice of God and Zebedee had enough faith in the voice of God to let his sons go. Praise Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And so their father released him to a higher calling. And after Pentecost, 
The only apostle whose death the Bible records is in Acts chapter 12 and verse 2. When it speaks of James. James dying by the death of the sword. It's the only apostle after Pentecost. There's only one other apostle that was recorded. Their death is recorded in the Bible. Can anyone tell me who that is? Judas, yeah. <laughs> Judas and James. Come on, Christians. Amen. Judas and James. Only two that are recorded. James. And John, the beloved, was given the responsibility of taking care of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Right. There was something placed inside of these men by a godly man. An uncommon man. One that the world is not full of. But he had put something in these young men that caused them to be worthy enough to be called into the service of Jesus Christ. And no, they were not perfect. And yes, sometimes they fired off at the mouth when they shouldn't have been firing off. But they had faith in God. And they were willing to do anything for Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Uncommon men who will come to church on Sunday mornings and lift their hands and worship God. Uncommon men who while they're out there on the job, they're not partaking in the jokes of the world or getting caught up in the lust of the flesh, but they're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uncommon men that will walk into the halls of the schoolhouse and be a witness and an example of holiness and righteousness. Uncommon men that will lift up the name of Jesus no matter where they go. Uncommon men that will reach out and praise Jesus, not just on Sundays, but every day of the week. Yes, Thank God for uncommon men. Thank God for men who will stand up in holiness and righteousness. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uncommon men will rejoice regardless of what's going on in their life. Uncommon men learn how to clothe themselves with humility. Uncommon men learn how to pursue holiness and follow after God. Uncommon men learn how to put down pride and will learn how to be submissive to the Word, to God, and to the man of God. Uncommon men are willing to be faithful and true. Uncommon men will do what it takes to, take, to stay full of the Holy Ghost. Uncommon men will not be quiet. But they'll praise the Lord. I wonder if under the sound of my voice there's somebody who wants to be uncommon. They don't want to follow the path that the world is leading. They don't want to set an example that cannot be followed, but they want to follow the example of the Word of God. They want to end up being what God wants them to be and not what the world thinks that they should be. If there is a man or a young man under the sound of my voice and you want to be what God wants you to be, you want to be uncommon. You see, there are only 12 that were chosen. 12. Yes, they were imperfect. Yes, they made mistakes. They said things and sometimes did things. They didn't always have the right attitude or the right spirit, even after they got the Holy Ghost. But they were chosen by God. 
I am not certain what the population of that region was at that time, but I know it was more than 12 people. Because there were times when Jesus would gather to teach and preach and there would literally be thousands of people gathered to hear Him. You see, Jesus chose 12 who were not like everybody else. This world is filled with near 7 billion people. And from the statistics that I read today, it's common to not be a true man of God. It's common to not lead your family in worship. It's common to not even darken the doors of a church. But we want to change. If we're going to have a harvest and a revival, in Brayford, North Carolina, and at Solid Rock United Pentecostal Church, it's going to take some un uncommon men who are willing to stand up and live and be what God wants them to be. If you will stand up with me today, and if you'll come down to this altar, say, Lord, I'm nowhere near what I need to be, but God, I want to be what you want me to be. God, when I pray, let your will be done in me. God, that's what I mean. Lord, I, I want your perfect will in my life. When I, I pray, use me, Lord. That's what I mean. Use me, Lord. Use me in your service. Help me be full of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost be alive in me. If you're here today and you need to repent of your sins, I want to tell you there's a place at this altar, there's a place at your seat where you can call out, you can repent, and you can ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Amen. I know I talked a lot about men today, but the same spirit that I'm talking about with these men, we needed to baptize the women who are a part of this church too. Amen. If you... If you know a man, if you know have a son, if you have a friend, if you have a brother, amen, if you have a child that you want, amen, to be and live like this, I would come down here and I'd find a place to pray today. Lord Jesus, change us. Lord Jesus, fill us. Lord Jesus, set us on fire, Lord. Help me to be the kind of man. Lord, I may not have had a godly father to follow, but Lord, the Scripture and this church is full of men that I can follow, Lord Jesus. Men who are full of the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. Men, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know, Lord, that you're able, God. Lord, that you're 